Joe here. Brian here. Gun shop. Yes, sir. We're here to talk to you today about how to inspect a used gun. See, uh, it's pretty simple. Look at it. Now, Brian usually does all of our evaluations on the used gun, so I'm going to let him take this over. Uh, let's do the Glock first. Yeah. It's actually in the box. You got it. So sometimes you get a gun pre-owned and it's like new. It has everything. It's hardly shot. Lots of times you can check them. Well, we inspect all these for you, but when you come in, we can talk about it. Sometimes there'll be a drag mark on the mag. If there is, that means it was used. If there's not, like this one, it's probably never shot. And some of the Smith & Wesson has, has the... Uh, yeah, they'll put like a marker. A little on. paint marker on there that's worn out. It means it's been used. Yep. It's kind of a quick call tell sign. The other thing you can look at is here on the top of the barrel where it uh, is open on the port. You'll get a lot of wear if it's shot a bunch. Get all shiny out there. It's the first place I look. I'll be honest, a lot of people don't shoot their guns a lot. So if it's a newer gun... And that's facts. A lot of people buy guns, they keep them in the box and never use them. Yeah, if they um, do, it's once or twice. How many guns have you, do you have that you not fired? <laughs> None. It's something in my eye. I have one that I... The yeah. rifle, suppressor, all that stuff, I just let Jake and Nico go out and shoot it. Test fire it. I get to fire it. Yeah, most so. people don't shoot their guns a ton, you guys. Yeah, so. Especially if they're newer items. But another thing with Glocks too, check the serial numbers. Glocks, everything has a serial number on it. The slide, the frame, the barrel. Mm -hmm. Check them, make sure they all match. Yep. You can tell if something was done to it or something's weird. Make sure they're good to go. This one is like new, but lots of times they're... Sometimes, I shouldn't say lots of times. Sometimes they're shot up quite a bit. Yeah, you can tell mm -hmm. a lot. Let's see. Let we me show them right now. Let me show them the SIG real quick. So the SIG is uh, an example of one where, again, probably was shot a decent amount, uh, not a ton, probably a few hundred rounds. But this was one that when we inspected, it needed a new extractor because somebody put a bunch of cool stuff on there. But sometimes aftermarket stuff can cause you problems. So the extractor that was in there looked cool, but gave it problems. So we changed that out. Now it's like a brand new gun. Yeah. Everything works on it. We check them out. Mm -hmm. We make sure the gun works. We're guaranteeing the gun works for you. So this one, the uh, slide's what? $500 upgrade? Yeah, it's like a $500 slide retail, somewhere around there. Yeah. So when you're getting it's it in the gun, that doesn't cost very much. You're saving some money when you buy it pre-owned. Yeah. It's kind of cool looking. Yeah, it's very cool. This is a titanium nitride coating, so yeah. upgraded coating. Yeah. But lots of times, if there is issues with a gun, usually it's because something somebody did to it. Not really something that wears out, usually. That's one thing to look for, too, when you're buying a used gun. Uh, trigger jobs. Yep. We're not a big fan of them. When they come in that way, you don't know who did it, Yeah. what it is. And, you know, if it's a drop-in trigger from one of the big manufacturers, that's fine. Uh, but even then, you got to watch out when people start... How they put it in. <laughs> polishing, sanding down, yeah. uh, grinding. Yeah, then... Or if you're buying the gun, you know, as a range gun or a range toy, then it doesn't matter as much as it does if you're buying it for self-defense, you know. Yeah. Self-defense, I don't touch the triggers. I leave them alone. Mm -hmm. But watch out for that stuff. You always want to check the barrel, check the extractor, make sure it fires. Let's grab a revolver real quick. Yeah, we got some cool little revolvers down here. Uh, which one? I'm just going to grab this one. Cool. So when you get into older stuff, so this is a much older gun. We're talking 10 years oldish tops. This is probably what, 60, 70 years old, maybe more actually, probably a lot more. When you get stuff like this with revolvers, what you want to do is you want to check the lockups. So you can pull them back and check the, um, um, how tight it is with the trigger depressed and the hammer forward. See how tight that, that lockup is. And you want to check each cylinder, make sure it's rotating and catching. If they don't line up correctly. Yeah. That's no bueno. No bueno. Believe it or not, actually, revolvers, I think, have more problems when they're older than the newer semi auto style stuff. They, they tend to have more issues where they get out of timing and things like that. Yeah. A lot of people are going to buy these for a collector's item anyway. They're not going to buy it for a shooter. Right. This is not. Even though that would I take to the range. You can still go shoot this. I wouldn't use this for home defense, let's say, or anything yeah. like that. Something like this. And again, Look for boxes and stuff. Does it affect the value of the gun? Yep. Mm -hmm. And accessories. Yeah, if it's going to have How many mags the they box, have? yeah. We we'll talked about this in an earlier video. If it comes with all the factory mags, so if this one comes with three mags from the factory, you expect to get three mags with it. If it does not, it's going to lower the price of the gun. Right. You're going to yeah. save money because you're going to have to replace them. Yeah. So people ask, why are you selling this so cheap? And I'm like, well, it only comes with one mag and it 
doesn't have the box and you know it's been shot a bunch so it's going to be quite a bit cheaper than the one that is like new when we say a bunch that could be a couple hundred rounds because again let's face it yeah people don't shoot their guns that much most people don't and the people that are shooting their guns a lot don't sell their guns that's true too they keep them they tend to keep them yeah. Yeah. It's broken in just the way they like it. Yes. So, yes. Hopefully that answers your questions. Anything else you want to add? Mm, no. Well, we can add in value of your guns. Folks, when you come in and trade in your gun and you're looking up the value, we all go to the gun broker. Oh, Everybody see. goes there. They might ask $1,000 for this gun. <laughs> that doesn't mean they sold it for 1000 They may have sold it for 400 bucks. Yeah. Uh, you actually got to look at the completed auctions to see what they actually sold for. Right. So, so many people think their gun's worth a fortune. That guy was asking a thousand bucks. Yeah, but he sold it for three hundred. Yeah, it's more it's more exaggerated on the older stuff, you guys. So when you bring in a gun, it's good to look up and see, get an idea of what it's going to be worth. But you got to understand there is little markings or little versions or little tweaks to something that cause it to shoot all around in the cost. So if something's collectible, it's going to be worth more. So if you're going and looking for you know, the most expensive version of whatever gun you have, yours may or may not be that version, which causes the cost to be, you know, either $100 or $1,000 just because somebody collects it. Not because it's that much better of a shooter or that much better of a gun. Happens a lot. That's, That's right way. You have a problem with it? Come see Brian. Yeah, and we look Looks up every fun. gun before we give a price. Yeah. We'll show you what they're going for. Yeah, I'll show you on the screen because... We're it's honest. Easy. Yeah, it's easier to show you than to not and BS and yeah, get, get down that rabbit hole. Anything else? I don't really think I do. We get a lot of used guns if you guys don't know. <laughs>